Uh, more creation to this. Um, this is the equipoise center in the surgical brain. It's very vestigial and it's very deep in the ego and it's completely unrelated to the self the self doubt center. Um, and the result of this surgeons often know what the best treatment is. Um, the problem is they often know very different things. Just as an example, the, the, the FACTS trial, which is a colorectal cancer follow-up trial, which we've recently completed, uh, recruited to with some difficulty, um, a lot of surgeons wouldn't participate because the follow-up schedule was, was uh, unethically uh, too unintense for, their, uh, for what they knew was important, whereas others refused to participate because the follow-up schedule was uh, too intense. And so clearly both cannot, both cannot be right. But this is, this is, this is, I think, is the problem of suspending disbelief. So anyway, just to talk about a couple of surgical trials um, that I, I think, I think uh, do matter. This is the Stockholm TME trial. And in fact, it is not a randomized trial at all. It's just a, it is a cohort. So why am I bringing this up as being a, an important trial? Well, it is the first trial to demonstrate pretty convincingly uh, that training can affect cancer mortality. And basically what the setting here was, was a, 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 a Swedish trial, obviously. The control group are two uh, radiotherapy trials of rectal cancer surgery. The intervention is that, that a number of workshops were held to train surgeons in a different technique for uh, rectal uh, excision. Uh, which everybody is pretty familiar with, I guess. And this is the result. What you can do with, with, with appropriate training is you reduce by more than half the local recurrence rate, highly significant. You don't change the uh, incidence of distant metastasis. And this is a good check because it, it shows that it is not overall improvement in cancer care or in the stage of presentation that's making the difference. Death from rectal cancer significantly reduced. Death from intercurrent disease actually goes up, and that's exactly what you'd expect if you don't die of rectal cancer. You don't you die of other things. So, um, take home messages from that. The impact of surgical technique on mortality probably is much more important than any of the adjunctive therapies that I'm going to talk about uh, in a moment. And secondly, randomized trials, they are absolutely important, but they are not the only way that we can move practice on, because there are some uh, situations and some uh, clinical settings where really you cannot, you cannot uh, perform a randomized trial, and uh, the Stockholm trial is obviously one of them. Now let's just talk about the, 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 the classic trial, which uh, um, as most of you who are working in the area of coloproctology will know as a, a, a trial that Pierre Deer uh, led from uh, Leeds. The, um, the setting is elective surgery for colorectal cancer. The intervention is, is, is laparoscopic surgery compared to open surgery. And this trial uh, was the, one of the first to convincingly demonstrate that if appropriately performed by individuals who were experienced in doing it, the outcome uh, from colon cancer is absolutely no different in terms of survival. And in fact, in, re in, the, in the rectum, there was a trend towards the results actually being a bit better in the laparoscopic group, although uh, in, in statistical terms, they are, uh, they, they are the same. So what can we learn from this? Well, randomized control trials in surgery can actually be done. But as Pierre and others will tell you, it was really, really difficult to actually recruit to this, and it took a lot of effort to get up to the numbers required. Um, and I think we can say that the, the, the laparoscopic approach is at least equivalent. Now, you might say, well, the rest of the world knew that because they're way ahead of the UK in terms of doing it. But it is in the main without uh, a real evidence base, which I think uh, we have been able to provide. So let's just move on to trials of surgery plus um, neoadjuvant or adjuvant therapies. I'm basically just going to start at the top of the GI tract and, 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 and work down. This is OEO2. Um, 
quite an old trial now, but it's in the context of elective surgery for esophageal cancer. Clearly, it's pre-PET and proper staging, and indeed, uh, prior to the surgery being in any way standardized. Uh, frankly, many of the surgeons who participated in this, I, I, I wouldn't let near uh, an experimental animal. But nonetheless, uh, you know, it's, it was based in real practice at, 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 at the time. And as you can see, the, the, the intervention is new adjunct chemotherapy, cisplatinum 5 FU. Again, old chemotherapy. Uh, but nonetheless, as you uh, look at the curve, quite a convincing uh, improvement in the overall survival in patients given uh, uh, chemotherapy. Uh, and this came out in squamous cancer and in adenocarcinoma with different statistical values. So if we move down, this is the, the, the magic trial published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Uh, led by David 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 Cunningham. Yeah. So the, the setting was elective surgery for gastric cancer, uh, new adjuvant chemotherapy with uh, epirubicinosis platinum 5, 5 FU, uh, control arm is surgery alone. And a, a, a graph that looks strikingly similar to the outcome from the OEO2 uh, trial, which you've got about a 15% difference in the uh, overall survival uh, in the patients uh, who, uh, that's progression-free survival, and also the, uh, the overall survival of uh, patients having the cytotoxic, um, cytotoxic chemotherapy. <coughs> uh, moving down, this is SPAC. Um, pancreatic cancer is, is pretty chemorefractory. Um, and 5-FU on its own in advanced disease has very little impact on the survival of patients with, with pancreatic cancer. Uh, but this is uh, uh, patients who had both those procedures, they either got chemotherapy or, or surgery alone. And again, a very similar shaped curve with approximately 15% uh, improvement in, in survival or about 20% reduction in odd death odds, odds ratio. Um, in the colon and rectum, there's been a lot more in the way of uh, randomized trials done, mainly industry-driven. It's been known for a long time that in stage 3 disease, uh, adjuvant chemotherapy prolongs, uh, prolongs survival. The reason I've, I've put up the mosaic trial is uh, it demonstrates that uh, better, more effective chemotherapy which has been demonstrated to be more effective in the situation of advanced disease, actually uh, is better than conventional chemotherapy in patients who have got uh, uh, in, in the adjuvant setting. And this is in stage two and three, uh, colorectal cancer completely uh, excised. Uh, Paul Fox chemotherapy was the intervention compared to conventional 5-FU uh, leucohorin. And as you can see, there is, there is a difference in the uh, survival, and as you would expect, it is uh, more obvious in patients with stage 3 disease. So what are the take-home messages from this? Well, in every disease site in the GI tract in which it's been tested, uh, adjuvant or neoadjuvant treatments will improve the outcome over surgery alone. And it, Taking all the trials together, the odds ratio risk of death is reduced by about 20% pretty, pretty consistently. And we've also been able to demonstrate that more effective chemotherapy in general terms will produce uh, better results when used in the adjuvant or the new situation. 